Hi guys, I'm traveling in the car and I'm super bored. I just did a video talking about my vacation and now I'm just gonna talk about crafty things. Um, one of my um, friends says I'm like a news reporter for crafters. So I figured, eh, why not? Since I'm bored. Cause I've listened to some book and I've listened to some YouTube. I don't watch it, I just listen to it. Don't worry, I'm not looking at the screen ever. I just like to, Kind of like when you're crafting and you're just like listening podcast. along. Yeah, well, so I could be listening to podcasts right now too, but I don't know, I was more in the mood to talk. Apparently people don't want me to talk. So, I was listening to Rachel Roxy Creations right before um, I started recording. And I would just like to put out there, stop telling Rachel all the things you don't like. You are making her lose her confidence. People need to stop doing that. If you don't like how something is done in a video that you don't have to watch and you don't have to pay for, stop. You don't need to tell her. Just let her just do what she wants to do and be happy doing and doing what she loves to do. Otherwise, she's gonna stop doing videos and I'm gonna be sad. What, Joe? constructive criticism. Complaining that the ink pad makes noise on the table is not constructive criticism. Well, is there a way to do it's it It's complaining. Noise? No, I don't think anybody, I don't, if someone is making a YouTube video, doing something they love, do they want to make that They noise? don't need constructive criticism. If they're just doing it to share their passion yeah, I mean, and yeah, share their love, do no, do. they don't need constructive criticism unless they ask for it. Now, if someone's trying to be an influencer, maybe, they and want wants to know them. what people like and don't like, sure, okay. maybe they want you to tell them. Sure. But like someone like me, or just doing, like or or maybe even Rachel or Alex or uh, Wendy or or uh, Jamie, like the people that I tend to watch, they're not trying to be influencers. They're just trying to share their love and their passion from creating. So you have to creating. Yeah. Um, and I just wish that critical people would stop being critical. And if you're being that critical to strangers, I'd hate to think what they're doing to people in their lives. I mean, those people are probably too scared to say something. Dude, you're a giant truck. Why do you think you can just go boom right in front of me in traffic? With like, well, they don't, they turn on their blinker and go. They don't like turn on their blinker, give me a chance to slow down and then go. They like, oh, let's start going, or they start going and then turn on their blinker. All right, this is supposed to be a crafty stuff, yes. not, not not my road rant. I mean, okay, I'm going to do craft rants instead. <laughs> it's not going to be all rants. It's just that I was just watching Rachel, and I just want people to not ruin her confidence and make it so she doesn't do videos anymore. Because I really enjoy watching her, and I really enjoy listening to her. And she has a lot to to give to the world. So stop breaking down people's confidences. Confidence, hers, Tina's, Gail's, everybody's. Just because you're watching doesn't mean you need to even say anything except for hi and hugs. Joel, actually, people who create videos try to read the comments to show appreciation for the people leaving comments. Okay, so, so when you come across I negative, they were doing it because they just wanted to do it. Fine. Yes, but you also want to interact with the people that are commenting. I don't think that's an influencing thing. I think that's just a kindness thing. That's a, we, we, the, in the, we have like a community, a friendly, kind community that we'd like to. I don't want a debate video. No one asked you to talk. Well, we're all stuck in a car together. We're all stuck in a car together. They're bored too. Apparently my boys are also bored and would like to be involved in this in this video that I'm talking about crafting, which I can't, apparently has become about YouTube. Well, it is about YouTubers. Okay. So, um, Bob hasn't sent me any stamps, just saying. I guess even if I did a video showing how to use the stamps, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't get any. I'm, I'm not that popular. 
And I don't know if I want to be that popular if people are going to tell you how you should do things or complain about things and break your confidence down. I'd rather have 10 people that watch me and comment and enjoy watching me than have 20,000 people with 1,000 people being nice and 10 people being mean. I don't know. I don't know what I'd want. Anyway, let's get back to crafting. Um, oh, I might actually do a video coming up too of just going through some Ideals magazines because I gotta tell you, my aunt gave me like um, six or seven Ideals magazines and I was totally getting ideas looking through that magazine, those magazines. And I was like, you know, oh no, it was her idea that maybe I should just go through one and then I could be like, oh, this would be an idea. This would not be an idea. So now I have like lots of ideas percolating percolating, 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 bubbling up in my brain um, just from those Ideals magazines. Do you guys like Ideals magazines? They are really cool. I think I had, there were a couple from the 80s, but the other ones were all from the 60s. Great pictures, lots of fun stuff, and now so many new journal ideas, I can't make them all. So I will probably make some kits. I have some stamps. Oh, my aunt gave me some more stamps, too. Um, oh, they're, I forget the brand. They're like little six by six squares and they have the stripes on the packaging and I can't remember the brand, but it's, I had some and she gave me some more, so I will probably use those as a base for making some kits as well. And I'm gonna try to be more intentional in my Etsy shop this fall and put stuff up each week. Um, uh, tempted to change my Etsy shop and start a new one with a better name, but nah, eclectic junk journals is fine. That's just what it's going to be. Whether it's junk journals or hybrids or just regular journals or supplies for making journals, whatever, or ephemera, it's just it's kind of eclectic is the important word. I'm very eclectic with my things. I have only sold about uh, 10 items and I had like two reviews. So, you know, so, you know, September, make sure you uh, check out my Etsy shop because there will be new things in my Etsy shop. But that's not what this is about. I have very many squirrels, so many squirrels crossing the road right now. Not literally, figuratively. Checking my speed too, make sure I'm not speeding. Because, hey, when did State Farm change how they do their speed for their drive safe and safe? Because it used to be, if you went over 80, you got deducted. And now, if it's your eight miles over the speed limit, you get deducted. And I found out that the hard way when I looked at my trips coming up. Hmm. So then I looked it up and I'm like, oh, they changed that. Well, that was 2017 when it was over 80. And the frustrating thing there was I was driving on roads that were like 75, 80 mile an hour roads. <laughs> so, I don't, you can't win no matter That's when I travel. Probably. Maybe. But then also you get deducted for having your screen on. But I have my screen on for my back. So, I mean, I get deducted for having my, for my phone. I'm not touching it. I'm not moving it. But the screen is on. So I get deduction for that. That's, that I don't like. All right. We have to go slower now. All right. What else has been going on? We've had the labels. People have been doing the labels. Uh, Rox, Rachel's been doing, Roxy Creations been doing, keeping up with her uh, challenge. And people seem to be enjoying Half a mile. that. Keep right to stay on I-84. Okay, staying on I-84 I some more. Still in Connecticut. Um, still have to get all the way down to Virginia today. It's a really long drive today. Okay. Uh, let's see. Keep right to stay on I-84. I don't know why they do that. It's just an exit. I wouldn't be tempted to take the exit. I would just stay on 84. I don't understand. Um, Continue on I-84 for 12 miles. I don't understand Google Maps sometimes. I wish you could see in front of me, though. There's really cool, like, mountains and stuff. With, like, ledges. I don't know. I don't even know if you can still see me anymore because I'm watching the road. But I thought it might be fun for you to actually kind of see my face a little bit when I'm talking. So, that, um, I, I don't know what Nathan's saying. Nathan's talking back there. Don't know how well you can hear me if Nathan's talking. 
But, um, oh, yeah, because I was thinking, oh, it was so nice to be in the car with Alex last Monday and this past Monday and, and you know, a little car chat. I don't know. Maybe once in a while I'll do, not necessarily a car chat, but some kind of chat where I'm just chatting. And, I don't know, it was nice to see one of my crafter friend's face. <laughs> I mean, her voice was very familiar. But you see a little icon and, you know, it's not quite the same as seeing the face. Uh, let's see. What's new in the crafty world, people? See, Gail's working. Well, see, also I'm a week or two behind on videos, too, so I don't even know what's new. I know it's like two weeks ago. Um, oh, I showed uh, my aunt uh, Shell's uh, digital that she did, and she really liked it. So, there you go, Shell. Um... So yeah, oh, Shell Radcliffe, the Rambling Crafter. She has her, she did her first digital a little while ago. She's got another digital that is either out or coming out. The second one is Red Roses, looks really pretty. Um, she was working on it, had some printer issues, so it's taking a while to get it out. I'm hopefully gonna do some digitals, but like I said, I have to, it's, I guess my word for the fall is going to be intentional. Um, yeah. But my word for my vacation was perception. And we even had a kayak at the pond that was called perception. And when I would take photos, I would change the perception of the photos. So instead of like standing up and taking a picture of the water, I'd get down and take a picture so you'd see like a close up of the flowers with the water behind it. Just, you know, perception seemed to be my thing. I'm not wearing a really good car right now. It's showing way too much of me. Okay face. That's all you can see is my face. <laughs> um, let's see. What what do I have coming up? Well, I've got projects that I need to finish. I've got my craft room I'm working on. I've been trying to do progress videos. I think I've talked about it before. Um, and I'm kind of splicing those together and then hopefully have a tour, a little craft room tour. So I think what I'll do is I'll, once I have all the progress videos and then like a final video that shows the room and then I'll do a bit by bit tour and a separate video so you can, you know, watch them when you have the time and if you want to see the whole progress you can or if you just want to see the new craft room tour you can. What is the speed limit now? Is everybody going so fast? Okay. See, people don't pay as much attention when they're talking, but people talk on the phone all, I'm hands free. That's the important thing, right? not holding oh it's 65 okay. i'm not holding the phone none of them either one i'm holding either one both hands are even on the wheel it's amazing it's magic all right so i've got the project so i probably should really finish that spring journal i started <laughs> the purple and yellow spring journal i started i need to finish that my friend would like a journal for writing i need to get started on that i just keep waffling. I can't figure out what I want to do for a cover. Mostly going to be just dyed pages and just other pages she can write on inside with some tags here and there for pretty pockets and tags, just for pretty nasty that she can write on the back of tags and some secret journal spots because, you know, she's got kids that will teach. She has kids that could get curious and she might want to write stuff about them she wants to hide. Who knows? All this talking is making me very thirsty. I don't know how people do podcasts. You just talk and talk and talk. I'm only doing this because I'm like super bored. Because driving is tedious. Monotonous. It's the same thing. Except for, you know, some stops and some slowdowns in between. Okay. Enough about the ride driving and the annoyances of traffic. I, I did that too much already. Okay. Uh, okay, so the yellow... So the journal... We'll call it the LC journal, the writing journal that I'm going to be doing. I'll try to do that some on video, but if I don't, I'll do a flip through at the end. Then I've got that spring yellow and purple journal I need to do. I want to do. I don't need to. I do. I want, you know, that's one thing Gail's been doing is trying to finish things in her project part. I do have a project part. Some of them are in there. Some of them are who knows where. I have some envelope journals that I started that I just need to put tags in. I have some tags. I need to decide if I want to put them in journals or if I want to put them in my shop. I have, oh yeah, the um, journal that has some digitals from Took 
and Rachel, which is just kind of a, a William Morris inspired kind of journal. Nice. Um, let's see. Well, you know, I went through that. I showed you all. And then I think I have a couple more that I started since that Dirty Dozen. If you find in my videos, Dirty Dozen, I think is what I called it. Because I had about 12 unfinished projects that I talked about. Made a list of them. Uh, I think I finished one of the things on the list. I couldn't even tell you which one. I don't know. Oh, the music. Was, was I working on the music journal at that time? And then I did another journal in between. And then, yeah. I can, oh, I'm looking forward to showing you the books I got. If you are on Facebook in Penny's Junk Journal group, you've already seen pictures of the books I got at the Big Chicken Barn. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back in my craft space. My husband's home tomorrow. So he'll probably want me to spend time with him. That's fine. He can come sit in my craft room with me while I do laundry downstairs where my craft room is downstairs. That's my excuse. So I don't want to have to keep going up and down the stairs. So I'll do laundry and the craft and he can come visit me, I guess. I don't know. What else would we do? Just sit on the couch all day? I might as well craft while he visits me. I don't know. What would you guys do? I love my husband. I truly do. And, um, it's, I know it's hard for him when we go away on our trips. It's harder for him to take off work because he works on weekends. Um, People don't like to work for you on weekends, but you know, they're happy when you work for them during the week. He's the only one that works on the weekends. And then also, finding someone to take care of our cat is a struggle. So, I don't know. And, and she's not like a cat. Yeah, she hasn't like bonded with Joel's girlfriend yet, so we can't really have her watch her yet either. But I need somebody who will like take time with her and spend time with her because she gets really lonely. She's a very needy cat. Meows at us in the middle of the night because her cat litter might be have something in it or she might be hungry or whatever but we ignore her until a certain time then she can have food and we try to clean out her cat litter before she goes to bed yeah she's super super spoiled um let's see crafty things um congratulations to the winner of gail's giveaway that's getting that fairy journal gail made i'm thinking she finished making it i've only seen the video so far because like I said I'm behind um yeah I usually when I am on vacation I do a lot more resting than I did I was much more active in going places than usual and it feels really weird so I took way more art stuff and craft stuff than I needed I don't know that I would change that the next time because you just never know when you're gonna have four days of rain and you want something to do I don't I did not get much crafting done, just a little bit, which I think I talked about in the last video, where I just, just talked about my trip. Um, so yeah, if, if I were going again, I'd still, t I think I'd still take all the things. Um, at the very least, something for me to do the fake embroidery, slow stitching stuff, because I can sit anywhere and do that. And I could probably live without my gel plate next time. I did not get to do what I wanted with my gel plate. I ran out of time, and when we were at the pond, we can't just go willy-nilly picking stuff because it's a cons conservation area. So, yeah, there's that issue. And then when I was at my aunt's house, we could have picked stuff there, but we didn't. But when I was at my aunt's house, I was inspired to do more with my yard, put some more plants, and not be afraid of annuals. Annuals are fine have just perennials just because I don't have to do much with them from year to year. So I'm going to try to do something to make the yard feel more welcoming like her yard does. I think. I don't know how long I've been talking. I can't really see my phone other than that I'm half shaded. half You just basically see the side of my face. Um, I'm the phantom of the opera right now apparently. What are you guys working on? Tell me in the comments. Um, oh, I watched this one lady. Um, oh, she's... Hmm, she used to be called the Clutter Fairy, but then there was some copyright trademark issues with that, and she had to change her name. 
but she was talking about um, DIYs and how not everything's created equal, basically, because she saw this wreath that she loved and tried to find all the things to recreate it, and then, you know, first, the when she finally found the heart frame, hers was an inch wide, and the one that they did originally was half three. a mile. Keep left to stay on I-84. Was three inches wide? Yeah, still on I-84. Um, was three inches wide, so there was that, and then even though she bought the same rope at Dollar Tree that the other lady bought, the other lady's was 13 feet, hers was nine and three quarter Keep feet or left something. to stay on I-84. Or something weird like that, and just all the different things, like, you know, not every not even all Dollar Trees are created equal. You, you might find something somewhere. Continue on I-84 for 34 miles. But somewhere else it might be a similar thing, that, but it's different. So, so yeah, that if you want to check her out, I will never remember to put her in the uh, description. She used to be the Clutter Fairy. Um, I don't remember what she's called now. She's got, like, dark curly hair and, and does a lot of organizational things and does some DIY stuff, too, sometimes. She's really sweet. Um, who else have I watched this week? I see I'm two weeks behind, so it's not even current, not even current events anymore. I've kept up with Shell, watching Shell. I watched Shell Ratcliffe, the Rambling Crafter. Uh -huh. Kept up with her, and mostly kept up with Took. I think I missed the last three of Took's craft table. So she's actually on my playlist. If I go back and watch some more. I put a bunch of people on my playlist to kind of listen to while I'm driving because it's like having friends talk to you. But I also have my books downloaded so if I go through areas where there's no mobile network I can still listen to my books. I'm listening to a Bibliophile Mystery Series by Kate Carlisle which is kind of interesting because the main character restores books. So she talks about bone folders, and she talks about vellum, and foxing, and all the things that we've pretty much heard of. Even though we make our own books, not restore books, we just make books. It's still it's kind of interesting to hear about that. And um, so that's an interesting series that I'm on book 12, I think. Most of them are in my library, so I can, um, in my hoopla, hoopla, they're in hoopla, and I can listen to them. I think I got a few on audiobook that were not on hoopla, and I might have actually already had a couple that I listened to previously, and I think I restarted from the beginning, because I had listened to a few, kind of got annoyed, because, or she grew up in a commune and talks about, like, talks about her guru Bob and stuff and you know I, that kind of a I don't know got, it rubbed me the wrong way I guess so I stopped listening to those books originally but then I went back to them I'm enjoying them I'm just in the later books talk less about that it just depends if they're in in um Dharma or not and then it's gotten less it's it's as the books have gone on, it talks about the commune less and, and her wicked mother. I don't know. But anyway. Um, so that's an interesting book series I've been listening to. And there's lots I, you know, I like when there's a long series of books that I can listen to. Because I like to listen to them when I'm crafting or playing games on my phone. Because that's what I do. Or cleaning. I guess I sometimes do that once in a while. Definitely decluttering. Also, I listen to podcasts. I've been listening to Dana K. White, A Slog Comes Clean podcast. Just kind of listening to, I've listened to, I don't know, about 50 or 60 so far. She suggests to start at the newest ones and go back, but I didn't hear that until after I'd started at the first ones and gone forward. So, I don't know. Now I just don't listen to them in any order and I just kind of look and see what interests me and and just play that one. But I didn't want to like listen to them on my way to Maine because then I'd be like, well, I'm not home to be able to declutter. So, you know. But I'd be all like revved up to declutter and not have a home to declutter. Although at the cottage, I did um, organize the shelves. 
Oh, oh, that's what I forgot to tell you guys about our trip. Oh my goodness. Okay, so there was a mouse because, you know, it's a cottage and it's not super resistant to rodents. I think every time I've ever stayed in a the cottage, there's been a mouse, but that's okay. And it would have been nice if somebody had told me there had been a mouse, but she didn't want her daughter to know there might still be a daughter to know there might still be a mouse, so she never told me. But I didn't see the mouse until like the third or fourth day we were there. Well, no, I didn't see him. I didn't hear him or see any sign of him until the third or fourth day when he found a Hershey Kiss. And I don't. It, that must have been what fell on the ground that woke me up. It sounded like a wood ball fell and rolled. So maybe he was able to pick up, pick it up and get it, I don't know, and dropped it? I don't know. But I couldn't figure out what, there were two sounds that night that woke me up. I turned off the fan in the kitchen thinking maybe it knocked something over. I don't know. Then the next night, Joel found evidence. And that night while I was trying to sleep, it was scratching and scratching inside the dresser, which is right between the two beds. And, because just like one room kept caught it. That's why it's caught it, just this one room. And I hear the scratching and scratching. I'm like, is it my headphones like blowing in the fan? And move those out, still doing it. My phone was hanging over the side of the drawer, so I took that out. And then I closed all the drawers because some of them, you know, apparently we're just messy people and don't close drawers. Closed all the drawers. Then I still kept hearing it some. Then at some point I told myself, well, he's, if he's stuck in the dresser, he's not coming out. So just ignore that noise and don't wake up to it. Turns out there was a hole in the back of the dresser. So he could get out. And he stopped scratching and scratching. Like the last time I hit the dresser like five times, like really loud. And after that, I didn't hear him again. I was getting so annoyed with him. I'm like, I don't have too tired to be looking for a mouse right now. So then the next day... My sons tried building this little trap, like a ha their own sir, their own form of have a heart trap. Oh, because Joel, he's been listening for him, and he finally heard him. And he opened the cabinet where the food is, and he was in the hot chocolate box. Yes, our mouse was a chocoholic, and he popped his head up and jumped out of the box, I guess. So then Joel set up a Joel and Nathan set up a little trap. And they had, I have, I had like a, just a plastic container that was fairly large. So if they got them in there, they could put the cover on. And I'd already figured it out. If I drove more than two miles away, he shouldn't be able to come back. And I really would have preferred that that would be how he went away. And they had a, a little um, chip bag so that we could hear if he got in the chip bag and they put food in there. And he had a couple of rolls of empty toilet, well they weren't even empty, were they the toilet paper rolls? So that if he went through the rolls in the chip bag, he couldn't get out too fast so that we'd have a chance to put the cover on. And he never fell for it. And then we, my cousin brought her cat on vacation. So now we had a cat go in there to see if she would catch him. But then my aunt made popcorn and no cat's going to be able to smell a mouse anymore when there's popcorn smell everywhere. So, the cat gave up, we gave up, and my friend had brought me, I can't see where the road, oh my goodness, and my friend had brought me some mouse traps. she came to visit me, thank you Heather, um, and so sadly, after trying all the things we could try, we put out the dead traps, I mean the mouse traps, the death traps, and um, I, I heard it in the night. I, I didn't look. I never looked. I knew my uncle would take care of it. and But he was taking a while. And so then I was like, Joel, why don't you do it? And he's like, but I don't want to. I'm like, well, what are you going to do if you have to, if there's a dead animal you have to take care of when you're married? Are you going to make your wife do it? And he said, that'll make her sad. <laughs> so he did it. I showed him how to do the bad bag backwards and to do his best, and he did it, and I was mm. proud of him. He manned up, he took care of the dead mm. mouse. Don't tell my cousin that we killed the mouse. So I have to tell my aunt and my grandma, like, don't tell Jen. We killed it. She's vegetarian, and she only has two creatures on her kill list, so they are ticks and mosquitoes. 
She does not like to, for animals to be harmed. And I felt really, really bad. I couldn't look at him. My aunt did. She's like, where, where is he? I'm like, why do you want to see him? She's like, oh, he's little. I'm like, thanks. I feel so much better now. Okay, so that was the one incident. And then... The Friday, the Porter John guy comes. Yeah, there's no running water. We get to use Porter Johns all week. So the Porter guy, the Porter John guy comes, which have new new company, which they're much cleaner and and we, I'm so glad she got a new company. And I think she also got a fourth Porter John. And she's got signs on them like for you know this campsite only, visitors only, cottage only, so that you know people aren't going and messing up the. John's and making them gross for other people, I guess. Um, so, yeah, the guy came, and he's behind the cottage, and apparently there's this big barrel cone, you know, the orange and white barrels that work as, like, I don't know, they have pylon? I don't know what they're called. But it's, it's on top of a stump that is kind of rotting away. There used to be a tree there. Obviously, that's where the stump came from. And there's holes down in the stump. And apparently there's a wa there was a wasp nest down in the stump. The week before, one of my cousins had seen it. We had the cottage two weeks in a row this year. Our family did. Hardly ever happens. Um, anyway, so the guy hits that bar barrel thing and bolts it over to where my cousin, the middle campsite where my cousin's husband is. And he's like, I just uh, hit a wasp nest and my cousin, he's He's like, um, you've got like 12 on you, and he's trying to pack up, not get wasps on him, and the guy's like, you know, kind of hit, hit off all the wasps that are on him. So then, the guy didn't have any wasp spray, because it was in his other truck. So my uncle goes down to the, uh, the local store there, and gets a couple cans of wasp spray, but all they have is just regular, not the long spray stuff. And the guy's like, the Porter John guy is like, uh, yeah, we're gonna get bit because we can't get close enough with those. We need the other one. And my go go just grabs both cans. My, did I say my uncle or my go go? Well, my uncle's name is Go go. Gordon, call him Go go. He grabs both cans and goes in. Well, at this point, I went to call um, my mom's cousin who is in charge of all the finances and treasury and uh, the trust and all that to see if she had anything we could use because I didn't realize Go go was gonna go in. Rambo style. So when I came back to the back, the Porter John guy had joined him and they were both spraying the nest and I guess nobody got more bit than they already were. And she had already sent off the other one of the other trustees who was allergic to them, but she so she always has them in her vehicle. And she brought us like a, the white can that's like the long spray, kills the nest, keeps the nest from repopulating. So go go sprayed that again later, and also well, the, another trustee came and checked it out to make sure they were gone. And the Porter guy John, Porter John guy, was able to.